Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we are looking at Unilever. Unilever is a stock that some of you have asked questions about in the last few weeks. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have the chance to record this video, so here we go. So first we're going to look at the company itself, what it does and so on, just in case you're not familiar with the business. And then we, I'm going to go over and explain why I still own it, why it's still in my portfolio. Okay, um, so we'll get to that. But just to, before we get to all of that, can I just say this is not just to convince you to buy it or anything like that. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not trying to say you go and buy it. I'm just going to tell you why I still own it, why, what's in my head, what the reason is that, you know, every single company in this portfolio has a story behind it and there is a reason why I own it, okay? So Unilever is no difference, okay? So I own 25 and 45 shares of this business here, okay? I put in my own money. I'm right now losing about 300 pounds, okay? So I want to tell you exactly why it's still in my portfolio. And that is the purpose of this video. So if you enjoy this kind of content and, you know, transparency and everything, all of that, please, please, please just give it a like. That's all I ask. Okay. Um, before I forget, Ramadan Kareem. Tomorrow is Ramadan, inshallah. Just make dua for me and my, for, my, for my family. And I'll do the same, inshallah, for all of you. And inshallah, we will have a good Ramadan. Um, so let's get started to the video first. Now, Unilever is a, a basically very well-known British uh, multinational company that makes a wide variety of consumer products, including food, ice cream, um, vitamins, minerals, pet food. They sell all sorts of products, okay? And I'm sure if you've been to a supermarket recently or if you look at your, if you go to the toilet or you go to the fridge, you might find some of their products in there already. Um, one of the reasons I actually started investing in this business, first of all, is the fact that they're UK based, number one. And number two is the fact that I know their products. I use their products. My family use their products. OK, and we spend quite a bit of money every month, every week going to the supermarket and actually buying their products. So for that reason, because it's Warren Buffett always said, you know, buy a Invest in a company whose products you really understand, and I genuinely do understand this product. Okay, my daughter loves their Ben and Jerry ice cream and all that. So yeah, so basically this is one of the reasons I invested in this company. Uh, so recently, a couple of things has happened. So let's have a look at quick, quickly the stock market year to date. So when you look at it year to date, basically I've lost about twelve percent. Okay, over twelve percent, almost thirteen percent. Okay, from where it was. Um, if you look at the year to date, okay, again, it's about 12%. When you look at six months, 11%, 11 11.5%. And, and just last month, it's just about 5%. And then the last five, five days, it's actually up, gone up quite a bit and about 3%. But I think a lot of that is just today because it's, for some reason, it's up 2% just today, okay? Right, so before we look at the financials, I want to talk about a couple of things that has happened recently to make one of the things that nearly made me sell this company, okay, this product. And that was the fact that, that this company was trying to buy JSK consumer sector, consumer unit, okay, for $50 billion. And that kind of got me really angry because I was thinking, why is a com this com you know, company this big need to buy $50 billion worth of business from another a competitor, if you like? Made no sense. So the JSK and Pfizer own the consuming unit they're trying to spin it off and so that it becomes its own business and the valuation was so if i can find it somewhere here in this article they've talked about the valuation for that business unit was 37 billion dollars to 48 billion dollars so what jsk and Pfizer are planning to do is basically create their its own company and then put it on the U.S. exchange, um, basically um, New York exchange, right? But then for whatever reason, Unilever decided they would like to buy it for $50 billion. So when that news came up, I was not really happy with that. But then the JSK refused it, just said, nope, we're not going to sell it to you. And then Unilever decided they're not going to go ahead with that plan. And that really made me happy because that $50 billion dollars, Okay, they could do a lot of things with that, with their current product. They own so many brands. What else do you want? Okay, focus on streamlining, maybe getting rid of some of these businesses that are not doing really well 
and reinvest that money into those basic business that are doing really well and think about the long term plan. Now, one of the things these companies do, okay, they're a huge company, they can't grow organically. So what do they do? They actually purchase other businesses and that's what they were trying to do. But you own so many of those businesses already, okay? You own everything. Just relax and just spend money on the businesses that you own, okay? The ones that are doing really well, push more, okay? Be more innovative, whatever, streamline what you have already rather than trying to expand and just buying more other rubbish businesses from other companies. I don't know what their plan was because they never said if they were to purchase this company um, and as part of their purchase whatever how much money they will make and they date i've not seen any data to suggest that they will basically this is going to help the company massively and i don't really know much about the jsk consumer um, um either i know this they obviously i know some of their products like toothpaste and all that stuff but you, they already you know i think what unilever is trying to do is what procter and gamble does they just buy every tiny business out there okay but $50 billion is a lot of money. 15 billion pounds is not even dollars, okay? It's a lot of money. So for that reason, I was actually not happy with it. So at one point, I thought if this deal goes ahead and the news is not great and if investors start running away from the business, this, and I'm just going to wait and then I'm going to drop up, basically completely sell this company, Okay. One other thing, okay, I'll get to that actually towards the end. So when you look at this business generally, okay, you it feels like you own an ETF and you don't just own one product because majority of the companies that we invest in own a few products and then that's their best whatever. This company owns so many different products. So when you look at this, right, the breakdown, so they have the beauty and personal care, 42% of that uh, business is basically that. 38 is the food and refreshment refreshments and then you've got home care for 20 percent okay when you look at the developed markets and an emerging market so this is one of the reasons i decided to, is to invest in this company and that was the emerging market section that's 40 58 percent of their business basically based on it so it's like buying an etf that has a lot of the emerging markets okay but at the moment, because of the war and everything that's happening, maybe that's not a good place to be in. But like I've already shown you, they have so many products, okay? 27 billion euros, okay, comes from these brands, from these 13 brands. More than 80% of turnover increases stable brand power or stable brand power. So basically what they're trying to say, their business is here is not going to go anywhere, okay? And the one thing that actually made me think is, um, about this whole company is this bit here 3.4 billion people use a Uni Unilever product every single day and that's huge that is really big and that's one of the reasons that I still own this product and this is why I basically want to hold on to this company okay so now you know what the company does okay the latest earnings report was not as good as we expected there's some headwinds and there's some tailwinds and all sorts of things going on in the business, okay? But the business that is not just relying on one product or one country, okay? It's basically, to me, right now as things stand, I'm still comfortable holding on to this business. And I will show you the financials now to understand why I'm still uh, bullish on this company, okay? So, it's in consumer defensive. The company the current share price so this is based on the us by the way i couldn't find the uk based um one there's not a lot of data so i couldn't find all these matrix it was quite difficult to find so i just focused on the us and i mainly used the morning star and yahoo finance to kind of find the information that i was looking for and it was actually there i cross referenced with a couple of other websites so it's quite accurate and um, so but they converted everything to dollars so it's kind of easier for me to kind of analyze okay so current share price is 46 dollars per share p is only 17 only 18 okay price to free cash flow here and Basically, the historically, this company has been trading around this area, okay? Free to, uh, price to free cash flow is about 13, EPS 2.56, and the market cap of $113 billion. Economic mode is wide, in basically, according to Morningstar. That means they have a competitive advantage over their competitors. 
annual dividend yield of 4.35, which is very big. Okay, that's probably the biggest, second biggest after Rio Tinto in my portfolio. The five-year growth rate is six percent, according to Simply Wall, Simply um, Save Dividend. The dividend growth streak, okay, it goes up and down, up and down. So it's not it's not that often basically great. So it's just one year. The, but the payout ratio is only 65%. So they, if they wanted to increase that, they have a room for improvement. And according to Simply Safe Dividend, their safety is 75%. That's huge. A company that you think it might be completely falling apart is actually 75% is quite nice. Then you've got free cash flow of $6.6 .6 billion, which they can use to do other things they want to do. Okay, so the fact that they were trying to purchase that business, okay, they will probably would have gone into debt and then that debt is going to create more problems because they already have a higher debt when it comes to current ratio. So when it comes to current um, liabilities, but long-term liabilities is actually they have more assets than liabilities, and I'll show you at the end, okay? But the beta, it's uh, very, very low, okay? Current ratio is only basically less than one, and this is the reason, okay? So they have more liabilities, more current liabilities than current assets right now, but they have a long-term liabilities is actually be uh, smaller than the long-term assets, okay? So right now, a company that has a current ratio below one should not be purchasing another company. That's my opinion because you're going to get into more debt and you wouldn't be able to pay it. Profit margin 12%. They're a very profitable business. Return on equity, okay, 37%. Return on invested capital as well, 14%. Then you've got quarterly revenue growth year on year and that's 6.6%. That's in line with other companies in similar situation in the similar sector, the Procter and Gamble's and so on. Quarterly earnings growth, okay, year on year is 27.5%. Good, again, growth estimate in the next five years, you're looking about 6.9, almost 7%. Almost 7% in the next five years. From a business that's like a dinosaur, doesn't, doesn't even grow. The only way to grow is basically, or not organically, they actually purchase other businesses to grow their business. Then according to Morningstar valuation, they are right now discounted 25% and ta has a target price of 59 okay? Then you've got tip rank, okay, which says about $65 per share and it has 46% upside, almost 47%. So this is the financials, okay? And I will show it to you. This is not some random, you know, like some made up numbers that I've got from nowhere, okay? I'll show you exactly where I got it from. So if I go to Morningstar, it's about 23% um, down at the moment, um, discounted at the moment. It has a wide mode, okay? If you want to check the free cash flow here, you can see $6.6 .6 billion. If you then go to um, Unilever here on um, Simply Saves Dividend, okay? You can see 75% dividend safety. That's the dividends right now. And then when you look at things like uh, pay ratio, okay? And then growth in the last five years. All of that, okay, is there for you. When we look at um, when you look at the whole finance, for example, and when you click the income statement, when you look at the growth of the total revenue based in the last five years, okay, what's happening in the revenue? Fifty-one billion dollars, almost, F almost fifty-two. Then it went down twenty twenty. Which company didn't go down, especially in the twenty twenty, because of the COVID and situ that's those situations, okay. 50.7, so about $51 billion is now bouncing back again. But when, what's important to us is this line here, okay? I don't think it will be the same because there's a lot of issues with um, supply chains and all this, this stuff right now going on with the commodity prices going up, okay? They might not, they might have to spend a little bit more money, okay, to generate whatever they need to generate. So that will probably, gross profit might come down a little bit. But gross profit of from 22.2, 22.8, 22, 22.1, and 20, basically it's heading in the right direction. Net income, okay, 2018 was a one-off, okay, that was over $9 billion in net income, but then 5 billion, 5.6, 5.5, 6 billion, okay. Then you look at things like um, balance sheet, and this is the bit I wanted to talk to you about, okay. So when it comes to current liability, current assets, it's got $17.4 billion, but when you look at the current current liabilities, 
Okay, um, if we can check the current liabilities. Okay, current liabilities here. Okay, it's got 24.7. So it's got more debt currently than actually, so they can't cover in this in the next 12 months. So if something happens to the business, they've got to find another $7 billion to cover it. And that's the only issue that I have with this. But when it comes to current li and total liabilities, they've got $55 billion, okay, but they have $75 billion in assets. So they have more assets than liabilities in the long run, okay? So if something happens to the business, they should be able to finance it, they should be able to find this. Right, so that is the financial side of it. The company is doing well. Yes, it's down and it's been down for quite some time. Now, let's talk about why is it still in my portfolio. And the reason is, when you look at the portfolio here, I have, I think, about 30 st companies. And I've got, yeah, 30 companies, three which are um, ETFs. What am I doing? I'm managing my own portfolio, right? So what is happening is, when you're managing your own portfolio, what is your goal? My goal, personally, is at least to get closer to what's happening in the real market. So for example, am I actually beating the S&P 500 or am I getting exactly what the S&P is returning at the moment? If I was if I was allowed to invest, okay, if it was Sharia compliant, the S&P 500, I would buy the ETF or index fund in the um, I'll buy the ETF and just forget about it or buy the index and forget about it. But I can't do that. So what am I doing? I'm managing my own portfolio. And what I want to do is beat the market if I can. If I cannot do that, at least basically get what the market is returning. The market's return on average, 7 to 10% every single year. If I can increase my portfolio 7 to 10% every single year, just like the S&P 500, or even better, that's what I want to do. Right. Does that mean then every single stock in my portfolio has to beat the market? Absolutely no. There's no chance of doing that. If you wanted that, then you shouldn't be investing in these kind of companies. Okay. So what I'm doing is overall portfolio, is it actually returning 7 to 10%? And that's what portfolio management is about. You might have one or two companies like the Microsoft is and whatever Lowe's and MasterCards and the high flyers, the Visas and so on, that will return a good basically and beat the market. Then you will have those laggers that do not beat the market. But and on average, you're getting 7 to 10%. So when you see some company like this is down basically 15% um, in your portfolio, okay, are you going to panic and sell it because you're worried about the company, you're just going to lose money and you can't see red and, okay, I see red and I want to buy more. Why? Because I know the fundamentals and I know my target. I only had this company, I think I bought it, it was one of the early companies that I bought, I, I think I bought it in tw early 2020, there we go. May of 2020. That was the first time I actually purchased a stock. And at the time when I was buying, it was almost $41 pounds per share. So I bought it when it was really high. And that's why I'm down quite a bit. So what I'm saying is, I've had this stock for about two years now. And I'm going to hold on to it unless something crazy happens where they decide to increase the debt and some stuff and that I'm not comfortable with. Okay, Then I will sell it. No doubt, I will take my money, £1,500, and drop it into another company and forget about it, okay? But for now, I want to keep it because my strategy is not just to look at individual stocks and try to beat the market with individual stocks. I'm trying to beat the market or at least to get closer to the market, whatever, with my portfolio, with my portfolio generally. And that's the plan, okay? The other thing I've considered not long ago was possibly break even with this company if I feel like it's not going to grow as much as I want it to, take that money and put it into the ETFs. And then you don't have to worry about. And that's another strategy, okay? Another strategy you can use if you've got losers that are not going to give you whatever, wait until you break even, okay? And then take that money and put it into an ETF that you trust, okay? And the ETFs will be, obviously, they're not going to drop down 20%, 30%. Okay, like since we bought this one and I shared that with you on that day live, okay, they have been up quite a bit. Okay, almost 8%, almost 10%. This one is down about 3.5%. Okay, but it's very, very small um, portion of my portfolio. So I could potentially take that money out and put it into that, or basically keep and hold, keep holding on to the business because I know I can still get 7% out of this business in the next four or five years. 
So my plan is now up until I'm going to wait for at least another three years and then see what happens. If something crazy happens, I'm not comfortable with the business anymore or it changes because there's no long compliant or whatever the case might be, then I'm happy to take my money and put it into another business that I like. So that's my plan, and that's what I'm doing with this business, okay? Unilever, I think, is a great company. It has so many products that I like. We always buy. It's basically like you've seen it. They have so many, so many products, absolutely. So, again, it's like an ETF. It's doing really well, I mean, in terms of their business and growing their business overall and the fact that they've all around the world and there's millions, billions of people that use their products and so on. Okay, and for that reason, I'm comfortable. I'm going to hold it. And like I said, I'm trying to manage my portfolio and I'm not focused on just one single stock. And if it returns 2%, 3% and the rest of them are returning, whatever, then at least if I can beat the markets every single year, I'm happy with that. Okay, before I go away, let me just quickly show you according to so the UK based stock, which is basically the one I own. Um, I'm looking at now simply Wall Street. So valuation, you can see is 27% um, down. Its price should be about £47.77 um, P there. Future growth about 7%. So just like what I showed you before, you can look at the past performance. You can look at the dividends as well. And then you can also sh look at ownership. Okay. So in the last whatever months, are the insiders actually buying the um, stock? And the answer is absolutely yes. It might be small. Okay. It might be small what they're paying. Okay. 20, almost £20,000 worth of stocks this person bought with. Okay, in this individual, and then you've got July. So this was recent. This was in July, and this was in June. And you can see each one. This person only paid hundred. <laughs> they bought one two hundred and twenty eight pounds worth of shares. That gave them like three shares. Okay, but you can see this is what I'm trying to say to you. The insiders are buying. When that the insiders are buying, that means they they know the company is undervalued at that, at that point. Okay, because they don't buy it when it's actually overvalued. So that is my view of Unilever. Like I said, I'm not trying to convince you, but I'm just showing you why I still own it, okay? As a portfolio manager and the fact that I'm looking at this, I'm not qualified portfolio manager. I'm playing with my own money, okay? Don't get me wrong, but this is my own money. I worked hard for it, but obviously I'm trying to learn it and trying to manage it, and I want to look at the bigger picture rather than just looking at individual stocks, okay? And a couple of years down the line, you might be looking at Unilever and probably it might actually go back to where it belongs, where the intrinsic value is at the moment. Okay. I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's a bit long, but I just wanted to say my piece. Take care, everybody. Ramadan Kareem. Assalamu alaikum.